Hello dear students and my dear teachers. Welcome to 8th standard geography lessons. Today I am teaching you a new lesson lithosphere. Lithosphere is the second lesson in geography. This lesson tells you what is lithosphere, what are the importance of studying lithosphere and what are the interiors and exterior factors affect the lithosphere. So let us see dear students lithosphere lesson. Welcome to chapter number two in eighth standard geography. Dear students in this chapter as there are many number of contents I teach you this in two to three parts. Okay so today we have the first part lithosphere chapter number two. The meaning of lithosphere and its importance will be learnt in this chapter. The structure of the earth and its composition, the structure of rocks, in addition to that, the internal forces like volcanoes, earthquake, tsunami, etc. and their effects. The external forces like temperature, wind, rain and rivers the meaning of underground water and its importance, all these concepts you are going to learn in this chapter. As I said earlier, all these concepts cannot be taught in this part one. So I take another two parts to complete this. So that let us go in detail slowly, but very clearly let us understand it. Now let us see the meaning and importance of lithosphere. Dear students, litho means rock. The word litho means rock. So the area of rock, so you can understand like the area of rock, generally it is understood that the uppermost layer of the earth. The outermost solid layer of the earth is known as lithosphere. I repeat, the outermost solid layer of the earth is known as lithosphere. Litho means rock. Dear students, if you observe lithosphere, it is very thick in the continents. The area of lithosphere is very thick in the continents, but the volume or the area of lithosphere is very, very thin in the sea floor. I am showing you both the pictures here. In the continent, the thickness of the lithosphere area or lithosphere layer is very very high whereas the thickness of the ocean floor the thickness of lithosphere in the sea it's very very less lithosphere consists of rocks minerals soils etc it consists of rocks minerals Various types of minerals like manganese, iron ore, bauxite, copper. Many number of minerals you find on the uppermost crust of the earth. And also soil like black soil, alluvium soil, like uh, red soil, laterite soil. All these you find in this uppermost layer that is lithosphere. Life exists on this layer. With the help of two factors one is atmosphere other one is hydrosphere hydrosphere hydro means water atmosphere is an area which covers this you know uh, lithosphere so atmosphere is very very important where we have oxygen where we have climatic climatic changes we have clouds and these clouds give us rainfall everything the weather changes everything take place in the atmosphere because of atmosphere and hydrosphere life exists on this earth that is lithosphere dear students let us continue knowing the meaning of lithosphere continents are parts of the lithosphere there are seven continents these continents are the part of lithosphere Different forms like and you know they are found they are seen in different forms like mountains, plateaus, plains, etc. All these are the parts of lithosphere. Let us continue 
knowing this dear students here in the lithosphere we have planes we have deltas we have mountains too our planet earth is more than 4.6 billion years old and still in the process of changing the exterior and the interiors of the earth is still under the process of changing man is very much interested to know these changes he is very much eager to know more about inside the earth are you interested shall we go ahead let us see what actually we find inside the earth how we have the physical features how we have the natural structure inside the earth what is inside the earth is still mystery for man even today it is a subject of inquiry it is a subject of knowing with years of study and research human beings got the information about number of materials inside the earth up to 12 kilometers going beyond this depth is very difficult because of increasing temperature that means for every 32 meters you go deep 10 degree celsius temperature go high that means deeper you go temperature goes higher deeper you go higher the temperature is because of that unbearable temperature you cannot go beyond certain limit that's why what actually is found inside the earth is still a mystery but our scientists have conducted number of research even in the ocean floor and also the continental floor and they have come to know certain things let us know dear students to understand more about the earth's interior humans are dependent on direct evidences such as seismic waves that is earth waves earthquake waves and also volcanic material when volcanic lava erupts the those materials are collected and they they are subjected to scientific research likewise when earthquakes earthquake happens the seismic waves are also studied with the seismograph so these are the two factors which directly helps our scientist to know more about interiors of the earth on the basis of the density of material chemical composition physical state of matter the earth's interior is classified into three main layers which are those three main layers let us see the first one is the crust the second one is the mantle the third one is the core where is the crust where is the mantle where exactly the core begins let us see them with number of pictures now let us know about the crust the crust is the uppermost layer of the earth and this layer is very rich in silica aluminum and magnesium silica aluminum and magnesium are found in huge quantity in the uppermost layer of the earth this layer has a depth of about 60 km from the surface from the topper or the upper layer of the earth we can go up to 60 kilometers down you find crust so this picture also shows the same the first layer is called crust and below that there is a crimson color that is called mantle below crimson you have the core so this piece of you know this information is very much useful to understand the crust the mantle and even the core this picture also supports you how the earth's interior look like in the uppermost part of the crust only lighter materials are found namely sial that means silica and aluminum silica and aluminum are put together and an abbreviation is made that is sial yes i stands for silica al stands for aluminum okay that is sial next below sial you have sima s i m a the lower part of the crust is rich in silica 
and magnesium. So that's why it is called SIMA. SI for silica, MA for magnesium. So this is found in oceanic crust. Now let us see the picture. Dear students, in this picture you can understand how the interiors of the earth is found. So the interior of the earth is core. Above that you have mantle and above the mantle you have crust. So Sima is found here. Next, the mantle. The mantle is the second and the middle layer of the earth. After crust, if you go deeper, uh, in the uh, uh, if you go deeper, 60 kilometers down, then you will find mantle. From 60 kilometer up to 2,900 kilometer, you find mantle. The mantle is the second and middle layer of the earth. The depth of this layer is up to 2,900 kilometer from the surface. The materials are in semi-liquid or partially molten state which is called magma and you will have high temperature here and everything is almost in the liquid state and in some areas they are in the semi-liquid state. The mantle is composed of dense and rigid rocks which have predominance of minerals like magnesium and huge amount of iron. Huge amount of magnesium and iron are found in this mantle area. The mantle has two parts. One is asthenosphere, the other one is mesosphere. Let us see the picture. In this mesosphere, right, you, in this mantle, you have two asthenosphere and mesosphere. What is asthenosphere and what is mesosphere? That we shall understand now. First of all, the upper mantle or the asthenosphere is partially in a molten condition. That means asthenosphere means upper part of the mantle. Mesosphere means lower part of the mantle. So that knowledge is very much required. Now, the lower mantle or the mesosphere is in solid condition. Upper part of the mantle is semi-liquid and the lower part of the mantle is it is in solid condition. So the lower part of the mantle is called mesosphere. Now let us see what is Gutenberg discontinuity and what is Mohorovic discontinuity. First of all, let me tell you Mohorovic discontinuity. You see the picture, I am showing you the arrow mark. This Mohorovic discontinuity separates the earth's crust from the mantle. Mohorovic discontinuity is a layer which separates the earth's crust from the mantle. Likewise, one more. The mantle is separated from the core. Mantle is separated from the interior that is core that is called Gutenberg discontinuity. Here I am showing you the arrow mark. Earlier I showed you the Mohorovic discontinuity. Now I am showing you Gutenberg discontinuity. Gutenberg discontinuity separates mantle from the core. So here in the Gutenberg discontinuity, rocks are different in chemical composition from those below and above. So above Gutenberg discontinuity and below Gutenberg discontinuity, rocks are in different chemical composition. Now let us go to the core of the earth from almost 2,900 kilometer to 6,371 kilometer, you have the core. That is the innermost layer of the earth where everything is in burning liquid state. The depth of this core is up to 6,371 kilometer from the earth's surface. The most important materials of the core is nickel and ferrous. Dear students, let us know about the core, the most interior part of the earth. So the important minerals that we find here is nickel and ferrous, which is in liquid state. So we call this area as knife, N-I-F-E. N-I stands for nickel, F-E stands for ferrous. Ferrous means iron. So this is the area that you can see. 
Now, the core is divided into two sublayers. The core is divided into two sublayers. They are outer core and the inner core. The outer core is known as molten core where the materials are in liquid and molten form. But the inner core known as solid core. Dear students, now we shall see the picture of the core and here the arrow mark is shown to you. So this is the core where we have nickel and ferrous that is iron in the liquid and semi-liquid state. Hope you have very well understood the interiors of the earth. In the second part, I come with some more other details of this lesson. Keep watching. Tell your friends to subscribe this channel. Let them watch freely. It will help them a lot to understand the lesson. Thank you, dear teachers, for helping your students to watch this. Thank you, dear students, for watching this. Understand the lesson better. All the best. Thank you.